The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got a continuation of the action that we had yesterday. We have decreasing 10 year yield. We're approaching 1.3% right now. That's putting a lift in tax stock seems to be the recording i could kick off the show every day with nasdaq 100 remarkable acceleration across the board you're the nasdaq 100 14,864. just for a quick jump we all know what's happening folks but really remarkable when you back things we had a 12,000 handle in the nasdaq 100 folks may 19th you're talking about basically six weeks ago that or thereabouts and since that time we're up almost two thousand points you're talking about almost a 15 percent pop in the nasdaq 100 amazon microsoft google across the board let's jump to amazon real quick remarkable acceleration this thing's been in a consolidation you talk about a nice consolidation we were up above three thousand as early as july 6th the week of that's one year ago folks we entered the three thousand area you were in that area basically march 29th you start a run and really the last four or five weeks, folks, you traded from 3172. We're going to open above 3700 this morning. You're still up. What are you up? 35. You're up almost $40. You're going to open up another percent this morning on Amazon shares, pushing above $3,700. Uh, remarkable. Uh, the the tenure of Andy Jassy begins with quite a bang. The news yesterday coming out on top of just the fact that you have yields decreasing, putting a lift in all the tech stocks. Uh, the $10 billion contract rewarded to Microsoft under President Trump. That's done away with. Looks like it's going to be split between Microsoft and Amazon. The market loving that for Amazon shares. Amazon trading at 37.13 this morning. Let's jump to Microsoft. Microsoft shares didn't seem to hurt them too much. Uh, you're talking about, let's put it back on a daily real quick to see the run. Yesterday, uh, excuse me, yesterday, a little bit of volatility. Uh, getting a little bit hurt. We'll put it on the 15 minute in terms of Microsoft losing that contract, trading lower. But look at that, folks. We're talking about right back to the highs we had yesterday. You're pushing all time highs on Microsoft this morning as well. We'll jump to Google shares. Talking about 26.12 this morning, up another $17. Apple had quite a lift yesterday as well. 143.50 right now for Apple. All-time highs on Apple, 145.09. It's been quite a run on the NASDAQ 100. You back it up, folks, just to the beginning of June, and you were trading at 123. You've added $20 in the price of Apple shares over that time in about six weeks. You're talking about, again, about a 15%, 16% pop in that company, and that is a remarkable pop when you look at the market capitalization of a company like Apple. Dow, a little bit on the flip side. Now, the Dow... 35,000. We made all-time highs on May 10th. Haven't got back up to that level. Early yesterday, looks like we might be within reach of that level. 34,755. We've pulled back, though, within about 500 points of that all-time high. 34,425. Back to a 15-minute chart. Jumping around to commodities. Interesting to see how crude reacts today. Talk about some volatility. With OPEC Plus having quite the negotiations, you're up to 77 bucks yesterday, you're down to 73, you almost make it up to $75 just prior to about 8 a.m. this morning. Right now we're trading at $73.92. Gold catching a little bit of a bid as well. Gold up to about 1804 this morning, and we jump over to the volatility index. A little bit of a spike yesterday, almost to 18 this morning, back to 1639 in the VIX. We were down to 1450 coming into the July 4th holiday. Things really escalating yesterday, though. We had quite a little sell-off. You had the Dow down 400 points. You had the S&Ps down 30 or 40 points from the highs that we were at, putting the S&P. You traded from a price point right when we opened to 43.45. You traded down about 40 points to 43.05. You got back 30 of the points by the close. And just like that, we get almost it all back overnight. You're going to open in the positive on the S&Ps this morning. And we got to jump to notes and bonds. 
because that's driving a lot of the action this morning. The 10-year is up another 10 ticks. Now, we've pulled back barely in the last uh, half hour or so. You were below 1.3% at one point briefly on that high of 133.22. We've pulled back about six ticks. We're still positive by about nine ticks, but you're looking at a yield right now of 1.32%. And interesting, when you put this thing on a chart here, we're now above, you look at that flash high we had on May 7th, that was a high of 133.16.5. We're exactly sitting at that high right now, but you did make it briefly above that level. You look at the consolidation we've been in, really since about February 25th, uh, and we got rising, rising prices, folks. We got decreasing yields, and we're gonna get Fed minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern time today from the June meeting. We'll see if those add any light into the conversation about tapering in the Fed, see if that puts a little volatility in this market, but I don't expect so. I don't expect so. Uh, wouldn't expect any surprises, folks. We've heard it all. We know the data that's out there. Uh, we know that there's some governors out there talking about maybe potentially the need to taper, whether it's next year, uh, but nonetheless, the market's just not worried, folks, right now. You're sitting at 133.17. The jobs number on Friday, we added some uh, more jobs than the market was expecting at a rate that actually had wages not, infl um, not inflating to where the market may be worrying about. And that's what the market wants. They want the jobs to keep coming without the worry of inflation pushing the Fed to start tapering prior to the jobs being made back up from prior to COVID. That was a good number on Friday and the market leaning towards that direction in a big way to put it lightly. And look at this NASDAQ 100, it's just not stopping folks. Every single 10 minutes I could come back and say we're talking about all time highs. Remarkable acceleration. Now you put this thing, it's been quite a trend channel that we're dealing with here in the NASDAQ 100. You back it up to really where things escalated November 2nd. All the markets take off. We got efficacy data on the vaccines. The world figures out for the first time. We got a real shot of vaccinating the whole world with 95% efficacy. We will get back to normal at some point. We trade from 11,000 at that point in the NASDAQ 100, folks. You're going to be pushing 15,000 this morning in the NASDAQ 100. Pretty well-defined channel line. We touched the lower boundary line on March 8th. We touch those boundary lines again on about the middle of May. And then we take off to the top side. And man, doesn't have to be a genius to figure out, folks, where we're talking about. You extend that top line to the right. Whoops, extend it to the right. Where are we? Come on. It's not allowing me to extend it to the right. That's weird. Uh, either way, above 15,000, as you can see, if we hit the top trend, trend channel line in the NASDAQ 100. And I don't see anything slowing this thing down right now um, at all. As you got decreasing yields and the NASDAQ 100 loves that and just the environment the win folks business is taking place online in a big way cloud computing etc uh, look at Salesforce we have some Salesforce in my newsletter rocket equities and options uh, been quite a run in the same way from 210 to 250 you've added 40 dollars in the price of this equity you're talking about almost a 20 percent pop from where we were trading at on May 11th, you break out of the downtrend channel, an old to our man Bud Rolfs. Folks, if you're dealing with channel lines, all right, this is a great example of how they like to trade. You break out of that channel line, you come back, you test that channel line, and then you break out. That's the buy there uh, to 250. It's what you like to see. Bud talked about it many times during his programs and his newsletters. Always nice to see that set up 250 for CRM. They're a big cloud player as well. All right, folks, stay tuned. When we come back, we'll be talking to our man Kevin Hanks. We'll be talking some markets. We'll be talking some options. Uh, quite a day in the market. We got S&Ps up five points. We got the NASDAQ 100 now pushing 94 points in the positive. Look at that pop. You're talking about six, two-thirds of percent in the positive right now. Seems like 15,000 within reach. We got the Dow negative and the Russell negative extending the trend from yesterday. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Kevin Hanks. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. 
Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's up five points right now. We got the Nasdaq 100 charging higher, up by about six tenths percent, 91 points in the green right now, 14,867. The Dow extending some of the losses we had yesterday, down about 42 points. The Russell pulling back as well by about six points. We got gold right now up about ten dollars at 18.03. And notes and bonds, folks. We got the ten-year up nine ticks we're talking about a yield of about 1.32 percent remarkable action let's jump over to our man kevin hinks every trading day folks 11 a.m eastern time fast market on the td ameritrade network right here on tiger tv 11 a.m every trading day kevin hinks alex coffee the team at td ameritrade network breaking down the market action analyzing example trades walking you through how to manage those trades kevin hinks we got a yield of 1.32 percent this morning yeah, good morning, Tommy. You know, a lot of people six months ago, nine months ago, were talking about where would we be during the recovery? 1.7, 2, 2 and a quarter. How many people were worried about 1.3%? Probably <laughs> not a lot. But again, goes back to my original theory that futures will go where they can hurt the most people. And, you know, not a lot of people saw a 1.3 uh, 10 year yield at this time of year. But, Long term, it's good for stocks. So that you know that will be that will, I believe, fuel this rally even higher. As long as remember, you're getting Fed minutes today. That could change a lot of the discussion and the outlook on bonds when when we get Fed minutes this afternoon, Tommy. Yeah, it is remarkable, Kevin. I mean, you got tech stocks charging higher, as I mentioned, NASDAQ 100. It seems like 15,000 will be the next stop there within a stone's throw of 15,000 this morning, 14,867. Amazon charging higher in such a dramatic yep. way yesterday, almost 5% for a company of that size to have that type of a move. Really remarkable. And that was on two fronts, of course, with the contract uh, being talked about there, the $10 billion contract with Microsoft. So they got kind of a double lift with the NASDAQ 100 and that good fundamental news for Amazon. But like you mentioned, we got Fed minutes today. And I had to mention as well, Kevin, how about the story in, in China, you know, shaping a lot of what's going on. These ADRs, um, we're all kind of aware of the risks of 
of owning a Chinese company and the regulations that come with that type of a government over there. But boy, it's been quite a wake up, Kevin, in terms of them just listing companies and then just cracking down. Diddy not even available on some of the app stores over there anymore. Diddy's down another 50 cents this morning. Um, how do you look at that, Kevin? What's going on over there in terms of quite a wake up call in terms of the, the risks that investors are dealing with putting their money anywhere near China right now, in my opinion? My opinion on, on this subject is the Chinese government will intervene in, in all things that concern the Chinese government. They will do it often and with great relish. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what I believe. I believe I was, that all you got to do, look at if, if they feel that you are getting, you know, bigger than they want you to be or getting more power than they want you to be, or manipulating a market that they don't want manipulated, they will intervene. And just look at the copper market, right? Copper was running. Remember, here, I'll give you the story. China is consumes more than half of the output of copper per year, right? Copper futures were running to, to all-time new levels. What did China do? They cut down on, they curbed hoarding and speculation in copper futures. They sold their, their individual stockpiles, uh, their own, to get copper futures lower. Why? Because it behooves them to have copper futures trade at lower prices. They will intervene whenever it helps the, the Chinese government. So the fact that these companies got a little too much power and a little too much power not in China, in the United States, um, th this is the other side of that. You're not dealing with a democracy there. Everyone's got to remember that. Well said, man, and not even close, right? They will intervene. I, th I was going to say all things of all things, Kevin, right? I mean, it, it, there's right. no boundary lines to what they do. It's really remarkable. I mean, the U.S., there would be uproar and riots, rightfully so, if they pushed out paper to the public um, for regulators and only a couple days later then announced to the world that, guess what? Um, good luck buying that company, man, because we're clamping down in a big way on everything they do, basically. Uh, remarkable. And I got the headline up there today. China's selling more metals, as you put, from reserves to ensure stable prices across the board um yeah it's it's a risk folks in the in this business you want to be able to quantify the risks you're dealing with the best to your ability we all have market biases but you heard from kevin and i agree i mean i don't know how you quantify a risk where basically the government's just saying no way we're going to let any company out there get too big um and it should be a wake-up call if you didn't already know it folks you should know it right now in terms of the risk you're dealing with in some of those companies uh so we have fed minutes coming out at two o'clock today kevin interesting in light of the move we've had in the yields we got the tenure at about one point three three percent still in kind of a lull in terms of what we're talking about with earnings until the banks kick it off next week yep. what are you looking at in this market and the conversation happening today in terms of fast market coming up at 11 o'clock kevin yeah i think the jolt number coming out at nine will be another headline maker as the expectations are tommy for that number to be higher than last month Oof. that made headlines when it was 9.286 million it's the expectations are for 9.3 so let's see that one come out. Uh, it won't be a surprise, but it'll still be a headline. And then today on Fast Market, Tommy, we're trading uh, the ga the gamers, the Activision and Take Two. Uh, like Folio is going to do a presentation on comparing those two companies as we still wait for next week when we finally get some second quarter earnings, Tommy. And it is interesting, of course, the bank stocks kicking things off and uh, bank stocks with the yields kind of crashing, pulling back a little bit. J.P. Morgan yesterday, 156 down almost 152. We had Bank of America, of course, 41 down to 40, 1.3% uh, yield in this conversation. And uh, gold catching a little bit of a bid. We got crude sitting right at about $74 with OPEC Plus having a little bit of a battle going on over there, to put it lightly. Uh, higher prices at the pump is what we're paying right now, folks, um, to the degree of $77 almost. Really remarkable, Kevin, that OPEC, we talked about a little bit yesterday, um, still the influence that it seems like they're having right now as the pump's not quite open at the spigot, right? Everything got shut off during COVID uh, and remarkable at $77. You were talking about, Kevin, the conversation of where yields would be as we came out of here. I don't think anybody was talking Talking about $77 oil when we were at negative prices just about more than a year ago in April of 2020. Remarkable in that crude market. Well, OPEC has more influence now, Tommy, because the United States has decided not to have as much influence. I think um, 
what we're doing now is kind of a void. I mean, it, you know, the fact that no one in the, our administration is talking about crude oil prices and talking about how high they are right now is shocking to me. So uh, this is what happens. So, you know, the crude oil market is in flux right now. That's for sure, Tommy. It'll be really interesting, folks, to see how uh, what is transitory and what is not transitory in this market. Are oil prices at $77 transitory? Uh, as a driver that buys gasoline that I put in my car, I hope so, folks. I hope so. Kevin, we appreciate the education, man. As always, we look forward to the conversation talking gamers coming up at 11 o'clock, along with just the great analysis you guys do on the program every day. Kevin, we look forward to the program at 11 o'clock. Have a great day, Tommy. You too, Kevin. Thanks. Tune in, folks. Great program. And uh, I love these shows that they do during, uh, you know, in between earnings season because they do some great analysis like they're talking about, whether they're just talking about trends. And uh, we all know, not we all know, but it's easy to get the, the basics of setting up earnings trades where you know there's an event going on. I love how they set up some of the trades going on in between earnings season. Maybe a little bit of a longer trade horizon on some of those example trades they set up. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and guess what? We got a lift going on. We got prices higher from 9:30. Surprise, surprise. Nasdaq 100 now up 100 points. We're talking about 14,870. You got the Dow slipping into the positive right there on the open. We're up. Well, we'll call it flat in the Dow. S and P's up about eight points at 34.42. We'll jump to the note and bond market since that's driving a lot of the action. A little bit of a pullback from where we were. 133.22 was that spike high. You got it about 8.30. We've given up 10 points right now, but you're still talking about, folks, a yield right now to pull it up. 1.335 to be exact. We were with a 1.2 handle, though, just within the last hour, basically, at that spike high. 133.22, giving up about 10 points. We'll see where that goes, especially as we just referenced with Kevin Hinks. We get Fed minutes, 2 p.m. Eastern time today. Look for those. Uh, keeping with the theme of rates, mortgage applications, applications sink to their lowest level since before the pandemic hit. Interesting here, mortgage applications decreasing 1.8% last week, uh, falling to the lowest level since the beginning of 2020. Both refinance and purchase applications took a hit. Mortgage applications to refinance dropped 2% for the week, 8% lower a year ago. The decline came even as mortgage rates fell. It'll be interesting to see how this shakes out in terms of if it continues on the trend, uh, dropping even more. If we see yields dropping even more, will that spur some refinances? Will that spur even further buying? We will see. But nonetheless, we got refinance and purchase applications for mortgages, both of them dropping uh, on a weekly basis. Other stories out there. Jumping around a little bit away from the market, but and I am not familiar at all with the fundamental uh, happenings of Haiti. Um, there's a lot going on over there. Unfortunately, you got a president getting assassinated, it looks like, an attack on his private residence. Um, there's been a lot of debate over there in terms of opposition leaders um, talking about whether um, the government is just a little bit, uh, they haven't had a vote in about two years, I was reading through here. But nonetheless, their president assassinated uh, Haiti, a tough area over there. Been to the Dominican Republic many times. Beautiful, beautiful country. Um, both of those countries so poor, they border each other, land border. Dominican Republic, um, much more tourism centered than Haiti because of what they are dealing with over there in Haiti. But it, it transitions to one another. And one of the things I'd always talk about being in the Dominican Republic is that you border Haiti in a landlocked country. Um, excuse me, not landlocked, but you border Haiti, and it is a tough happening over there in a big way, and you're seeing it play out. Hopefully, they get some stability over there um, somehow. Not sure that happens when you got presidents getting assassinated. It only seems to make things worse, but a sad story going on over there. Uh, so we talked about Fed minutes. They're coming out at 2 p.m. Eastern time for the June meeting uh, under scrutiny for taper timing hits be interesting to see how the market really reacts to this the chairman powell he could not be stronger in everything that he's saying the data really lining up to give him the ammunition to speak um pretty confidently in his estimates that at least as of right now the data we have right now hints towards transitory inflationary data that is going to allow the fed to keep pumping stimulus into this economy. Uh, but we'll get a little bit of a glimpse in terms of those minutes coming out at 2 p.m. And of course, we know the Fed, they're buying 80 billion in treasuries and 40 billion in mortgage-backed securities every single month. I mean, every month that marches on, folks, you're talking about a $120 billion that they are in there buying. Um, after Powell indicated that the FOMC would start talking about when it might be appropriate to start reducing these purchases at subsequent meetings, a number of officials voiced support for starting the process sooner rather than later before the end of this year. So they go through here. You got Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic said at the central bank could start slowing its asset purchases in the next few months. Watch out if that happens, folks. I don't imagine that's going to happen on the next few months. I do not imagine Chairman Powell is going to be tapering those in the next few months. But nonetheless, you have Fed presidents out there talking about it. Dallas Fed Chief Robert Kaplan said he wants the process to start, quote unquote, soon so as to avoid excess risk taking in markets and so that the Fed won't need more aggressive measures, including rate hikes to halt financial excess later. San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly, uh, customarily more dovish member of the committee, along with Bostic, a voter of monetary policy this year, told the AP last week, that a start to tapering this year may be appropriate. So it's gonna be interesting when you get those minutes and see what they have to say in there. 
And as we jump back, 10 years sitting at about 133.11, checking in on markets, tech stocks pulling back a little bit from that lofty high, 14,821. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we see Amazon shares still up 7 tenths for sit, sitting above 3,700. We'll check on Google shares. Higher by about a quarter percent this morning. Microsoft shares giving back some of the gains, but up by about a quarter percent as well. Facebook shares up by about half a percent this morning at 354.78. We'll check on Netflix shares as well, pulling back from the open, but still up about six tenths percent in all the markets now. It didn't take long, folks. Look at this. We got the Russell up by seven, the Dow up by 90, NASDAQ 100 up by 50. 53. You have to chuckle in the resurgence. Um, just remarkable acceleration across the board. There's no divergence today. All the markets higher, folks. Remarkable acceleration. We got crude back above $74 at $74.08. Gold contract holding steady at about $18.05 this morning. And let's jump around to what else we got going on. How about this? So this one catching my eye, folks, because Visa says crypto-linked card usage tops $1 billion in the first half of 2021. When you see how... A company like Visa is working with some of the largest crypto exchanges in the world, particularly Coinbase is the one that comes to my mind. They mentioned it in here. Companies currently partnered. This is Visa is partnered with Coinbase, Circle, and BlockFi. I'm not familiar with Circle and BlockFi. They're probably big players in the industry, just not familiar myself, to allow its cards to access crypto wallets on those platforms. I mean, think about the potential, folks, okay? If you are able to use a Visa card that is simply tied to your Coinbase account that is denominated in Bitcoin or Ethereum, or who knows, maybe they're going to allow it to be uh, stored in Dogecoin. Hopefully not for everybody's benefit. Um, but nonetheless, you're seeing it. And that is quite a transition, folks. When you think about a public company like Coinbase, so you have the reliability of a public company like Coinbase. Coinbase up about 2% today with crypto getting a little bit of a lift uh, today as well. You got Bitcoin right now up about $800. But man, it's not going to take much, folks. If you allow people to basically have quote unquote bank accounts, right? Not really bank accounts in the traditional sense, but basically a bank account in that you're storing value Talk about volatility value, though, when you talk about storing it in crypto. But then you can have a Visa card linked to that account that you can then use for everyday transactions. Seems like that could be a monumental escalation to the upside for cryptos. If you start having people that believe in the system, you have the ability to store their wealth in cryptos. And, folks, it's not a store of wealth, okay? It might be. But a store of wealth is supposed to be something that doesn't have the same type of volatility that you're dealing with in some of these cryptos, okay? It is a, it is a, it is an account that has value that has tremendous volatility. Now, yes, it's a value account, but I don't know if it's a store of value because if you're storing it and it's dropping 50% over a couple months, is it really a store of value? But nonetheless, if you start allowing consumers to use that value on everyday transactions with simple ease, which is what's happening here, possibilities are endless, folks, in a big way. And when you start looking at Visa said digital payments such as cryptocurrency have the potential to disrupt the $18 trillion of annual consumer spending. Well, they're at a billion dollars right now, um, but that's nothing to shake your head at as we're only about halfway through the year. By comparison, Visa estimated crypto spending at only a fraction of that amount in the same periods last year in 2019. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about this when we get back. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Pedro Byte's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got markets in positive territory yet again, kicking things off. And, folks, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, we talk to Teddy. If you want to reach Teddy, folks, you can every trading day at forex trading Dash unlock. We talk to Teddy once a week. We got a full forex breakdown going on. Uh, we got some action going on as well this week. We got some action in that crude market as well, for sure. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Hey, how you doing, Tommy? We hit 75 doing. bucks a barrel in oil already. Whew. That oil market, man, you want some volatility, folks. Watch out, crude right now. Where are we sitting? 73.60. We were at 76.98 yesterday. We got volatility in both directions so far this morning as crude tries to figure out where it's going to end up. Uh, but, man, you higher prices. You know where it's going to end up. It's going to 100. <laughs> That's we. I heard that somewhere on TFNN the last couple months, Teddy. I did, man. I got to love it, man. We were, hey, $75. I was just talking to Kevin Hinks uh, to kick off the program, and we were talking about, you know, the conversation about where mm -hmm. yields would be um, during the this year and man if anybody i mean talk about a trade from last year for that crew contract negative prices to 77 dollars basically right. over a year and a half remarkable um mm -hmm. we got some remarkable action i'm um, talking about in currency steady this you know with the yields really rocking around to 1.3 right. percent this week we get fed minutes today uh mm -hmm. what are you looking at most this week teddy in, in forex uh, well, I'm loving the divergence. It's finally confirmed. You know, we've been talking over the past couple of weeks how we're getting out of this pandemic trade and now we're getting back to the reality of real numbers and stuff like that, especially economic numbers. And it's nice. We flipped the curve for a half year mark. We're starting third quarter off with some very interesting pricing. Like, like I said, we hit, now we hit 75 bucks a barrel now starting off third quarter. I see 100 probably before the fourth quarter, actually. I, I was looking at the end of the year, and now I'm looking more at before that. So, And uh, this is what's going to start to impact earnings, and it's also going to impact the bond market and especially the currencies. You know, And we have true divergence going on right now where um, we have dollar strength. Irony, we have a bond rally that's um, coming out of nowhere. There's no reason for the bonds to be going up right now except for the, probably the insight that we know the Fed's going to keep holding it up for the next couple months you sure. know so um but as far as dollar strength we shouldn't be getting this this kind of strength right now but it shows that if you see like today the euro is actually on its lows and the pound isn't so much the euro is, is making lower move lows while the pound is coming off a lower move high but it didn't make a lower move low so we have some divergence in the in the european currencies i see the euro still getting down to probably a dollar 17 half before it starts to bounce um the pound may start to go sideways 
I don't see that being as weak against the dollar, even though it's one of the top two components of the dollar index. Um, but then we have strength in the dollar versus the Swiss and the yen. Um, like right now, like usually when you have flight to quality, there's different reasons why you go to either like the yen, the Swiss, or even the dollar. Um, the only time you really see the bonds going up and the dollar going up at the same time with these other currencies being under pressure is when we're at, on the verge of um, some sort of uh, – conflict, um, which we right now don't seem to be so, but it seems sure. like the markets are edging that way. Um, the Japanese yen, I still see getting up for another breakout to the upside, the US dollar yen trade, probably up to 112 half, 113 even within the next week and a half to two weeks with the way the trend's going. And that's the thing is, that market's trending. U.S. dollar um, yen is trending. Um, yeah. You have the U.S. dollar Swiss, which is trending. So they're making higher move highs and higher move lows. So they're buy dip scenarios right now, and that remains. It's not. There's no more. Are you a dollar bull or a dollar bear overall? Well, if you are, you're going to get chopped up. Um, Australian dollar, it's a dead currency versus everything for the next probably six to twelve months, especially with China strong arming them right now. I mean, China put a noose around them a couple months ago, and every week. It just keeps tightening it more and more on them. Um, you can see, especially with what they're doing with the commodities right now. Yeah. And then even putting on tariffs on uh, Australia as well. So they're putting tariffs on Australian goods that they usually need. That doesn't make sense. So that's another reason why I think that if you're trading the Australian dollar versus any other currency, it's it's a bear, you know. Um, and the New Zealand dollar is showing that divergence. While Australian dollar is making lower move lows, the New Zealand dollar didn't make a lower move low versus the dollar, you know. So it's, is that mean that it's not going to stay in its bear trend either? No, but I think that is probably going to be neutral. So, and that's divergence. And once we have divergence, that means that markets are free flowing again. And the big markets, the bond market, I mean, the bond market is on it's on its own. I mean, who knows why it's doing what it's been doing this year, because it's done everything without any intervention, you know, or any type of, you know, thing like that. So yeah, we have some good momentum. Divergence is the word of the day. Hey, how about the uh, Australian dollar? Dollar. Stay on that one for a second. So I was reading an article. Maybe, I think it was over the weekend at one point, just talking about Australia in general, man. I mean, you know, living in the U.S. where we have such great access to vaccines, thankfully, things are really opening back up. We have travel going on. I was at a mm -hmm. hotel this past weekend for the first time. Australia is like living in a world that seems like a year ago in terms of the clampdown they still Absolutely. have going on there. Um, they have restrictions in terms of even citizens as sort of how many can return. There was some sad mm -hmm. stories in there in terms of people they got you know whether it's sick parents they want to make it home can't even make it home as a citizen of the country right. to see their parents um is that stuff that you look at teddy in oh, terms of that absolutely. environment because i was shocked mm -hmm. to read you know the the harsh reality that many australians right. are dealing with in terms of no sure. access to the vaccines and just a lockdown that that many mm -hmm. americans thankfully uh think is far in the past for us but man it's a mm -hmm. tough deal going on over there i was pretty oh, shocked it's no to joke it is yeah. no joke i mean it's like let's just, it's almost like what happened before mad max the first movie started this sentiment that the apocalypse going it, on it was a, i killed no, those no poor lie. people over there man it yeah. is really intense that we're pushing a year no and a joke. half and you can't even fly home to see your family sure. um a year and a half into things um right. so i imagine that has to be impacting the currency because well i was yeah go ahead yeah the, well the economy everything you're saying right there that has to influence their economy yeah. people are making decisions now because sure. if they're being so restricted that also makes them make decisions they normally wouldn't make you right. know yeah so yeah it's it scary quite stuff. A wake up folks if you haven't looked into it mm -hmm. do some googling because i was shocked right. myself and i consider myself pretty well informed but you get mm -hmm. caught in a little bit of a bubble as in you know it's only human nature as in it's just uh, sure. remarkable the life we're living right now versus what's going on in some other countries that's not even close to where we're at Australia just a mind-blowing it was just really to see the citizens there that couldn't even make it home to see some of their family right. they have ca they have caps folks on the amount of people that can literally fly into the country on a daily basis and because of that you have all airline flights being through the roof expensive because you got so mm -hmm. many flights in there and so it's a real just cluster it's in a big way Poof. Yeah, um, really so what else, Teddy? I mean, we're jumping around a bit. That's a great conversation. What are you looking for in terms of trends as we stretch forward here with crude pushing $77? Um, trends as far as crude, I don't think crude is going to dictate the currencies. It's going to impact the earnings in the markets. We'll see because I think that as we right now at 75 and higher, Americans are going to start to pull back their spending. You know, but right yeah, now we're having the yeah. we're having the party. Everyone hasn't been able to go out for a year. So they're like, woohoo, OK, we're going to have a big totally. party for a few weeks. 
it's ending. It's going to end fast. I mean, people who don't remember when George Bush was uh, president, when oil hit, you know, 75 to 100, the brakes started coming on in the economy. God forbid we go up to 150 again, you know. So, I mean, then, I mean, especially because you have higher taxes on oil, you have sure. an attack on the oil industry, transport stock. And see, the thing is, back then we didn't have food inflation and everything else. We had deflation going on, but we had high gas prices. You can absorb high gas prices with deflation. You can not be in an inflationary sure. environment, especially like we're in right now, and then throw high gas prices on so it. High people rent, just, high commodities. People are make decisions. Yes. Uh, you have to. Exactly. I agree, man. I agree. Right. Teddy, right. we appreciate the update, man, as always. And uh, folks, check Teddy out every trading day, forex-trading-unlock.com. We look forward to talking to you next week, Teddy. Have a Thanks, great one, Tommy. man. You Thank too. you. Take care. Okay. We'll be right back, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge. Just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 8, NASDAQ 100 up by 54. The Russell taking a little bit of dive to negative prices, negative by 8 points this morning. If you head on over to the front page of TFNN, folks, right after this program, every trading day, our man Basil Chapman live with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Basil, that's remarkable, folks. Time is remarkable in a big way. How about a week from today, folks, July 14th? Basil's going to be hosting a live multi-day webinar. All right, so this is Basil's entire Chapman Wave methodology. He'll be in there 
from 9 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. a week from today, July 14th. Uh, and what Basil's done is he set up a multi-day webinar. So he's gonna do a full day webinar talking about the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology explained live. He'll be in there with two three hour sessions. So you go nine till noon, you go one till four, you wrap things up with a 30 minute session at the end of the day. This is a week again, a week from today, July 14th. And then what's so great Basil's done is he wants you to have the ability folks to contact him because you know you do a full day webinar. All right, Basil does an outstanding job, but we all know how it goes, right? When you when it comes time to apply some of the, what you're learning, you might have some questions as you're doing that on your own. So you got a couple weeks to use what Basil's teaching you. Okay, you can email Basil within that time, and he's always available to his subscribers. So you can email him during that time, talk about what you want to address in the two hour follow-up session two weeks later on July 14th. All of that, folks, $295. Now, what's so cool is you get a month of Basil's daily newsletter included in that, okay? You're going to get a booklet that's sent to you immediately. This will be archived in there as well. You're talking about nine hours of education, folks, an outstanding webinar, multi-day, a full-day webinar a week from today with a two-hour follow-up session. Uh, I encourage you to check it out, folks. Basil Chapman, a great trader, a great educator as well. Does a great job of getting across the education that he's providing to subscribers. And if you're in the Miami market, folks, and you're looking for a live event two weeks from today, so we got a week from today, Basil's first webinar that he'll be doing, then a week from then, Friday, July 23rd, so nine days really, but Miami, folks. Steve Dahl of Taz Market Profile. This is an in-person webinar, folks, and please only sign up if you can attend because it's free for TFNN members, all right? TFNN sponsor is the promo code, but please only sign up if you can't attend live because he's got real seats he's got to fill, but check that out. And Steve's going to be on the Tom O'Brien Show today talking about that at 3.07. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's coming up live next.